There's a saying, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. Buddha. Come on, Miss Bonnie. Get ready, girl. First thing we want to know about nails is what does a healthy nail look like? A healthy nail is translucent pink, it's smooth with no pits or ridges in it, and it's actually a little flexible because it has 15 to 25% water. Now in the older text that I used to teach out of, the, the, the sentence in there that I'll never forget is, nails are the mirror to your health, and that is really true because if you have any circulatory problems, if you're anemic, anything that's going on in your body, it's always gonna reflect in your nails and also in your hair, but we're on nails right now. Now, why do you think you need to know this? Not just for your state board test if you haven't gone yet, but secondly, if you like to do nails, period. We wanna know the parts of the nails, we want to make sure that we don't add any damage to the nails, because a lot of people do damage the nail plates unnecessarily. So it's good to know this because you don't want to be that kind of cosmetologist where you're just digging pits in someone's nails and when they take their artificial enhancements off, if they choose to wear them, uh, it looks like they shredded, you know, paper and that's their nails. Their nails look like shredded paper. You don't want that. That could take years actually to be repaired. So onward, what is the technical term for the nail? It is onyx. And this is important for you to know because when you get to the chapter of nail disorders, you'll notice that there's a lot of onycos. Well, remember the technical term for nail is onyx. So then you have like onychotrophia, for example, that's one disorder. So just be mindful of that. Uh, let's see, nails are made up of keratin and so is your hair and your skin. So your skin is actually considered soft keratin. Your hair is considered a harder keratin. <laughs> And then your nails, the nail plate is actually the hardest form of keratin. And now we get into the parts of the nail. What makes that keratin? Well, your nail plate is forming in what's called the matrix and some books call it the matrix bed, but it's forming those um, matrix cells that's forming the nail plate and then it continues to grow. Now there's a visible portion of the matrix because your matrix is in here where it's not visible right but there's a visible portion on the nail that is the matrix also but it's called the lanula and it's that little white half moon that you'll see in nails that's actually the visible portion of your matrix but it's called lanula little half moon there and then you have the nail plate, which all that keratin is formed when the air hits it. Um, it's considered dead, meaning, you know, when I file that nail or if I buff over it, I don't feel it unless I've gone down too far. And now when you buff your nails and then you start feeling a burning sensation, you know, or it's hurting, that's because you've buffed down too far and now you're getting close to the nerves and the blood vessels that's underneath. So let's focus on the nail plate first. The nail plate is what's covering the entire portion, which is called the nail bed. And then the tip of the nail that extends over the tip of the finger is actually called the free edge. So the free edge when we're doing manicures and when we're doing nail services is what we would file and shape up before we add on tips or before we do our service, which manicure, pedicure even. Uh, on average, a nail plate grows, now they say one tenth of an inch to one eighth of an inch per month. Used to just be one eighth of an inch. So I don't know who does the figures, but every so often they change it. So let's say for now, for test testing sake, one tenth to one eighth of an inch per month. And then believe it or not, your toenails grow half that rate. 
yeah so they grow even slower and it seems like our toenails grow faster but my personal belief is because we don't really pay attention you know when we're going to work and we're so busy and we have on socks and shoes all the time and before we know it our nails have grown out and it's time for us to get the band saw out and shave those nails down because they've gotten too long but okay um talked about a healthy nail talked about what it is we talked about how fast it grows here's a little fun fact for you too nails grow faster in the summertime than in the winter and same with your hair but the reason for that is because it's warm so your blood is circulating easier right it's not clenching up and and trying you know harder to circulate to keep your body warm you're already warm because it's summertime so it's more free flowing i'll say that and then it nourishes those matrix cells so the nail plates grow faster just like the hair does uh let's see oh and number wise too as far as nail growth is one tenth to one eighth of an inch per month or it's 2.5 millimeters to three millimeters it's always good to know both figures for testing sake just like remember i've told you it's always good to know all the terms for a certain part or whatever you want to know all the terms just in case it shows up on your written exam all right so talked about the nail plate we talked about the free edge the nail bed now here's what's crazy is a lot of people interchange the nail bed with the nail plate so I've seen a lot of professionals doing demos and they'll say yeah you just want to buff the nail bed here well if you actually buffed someone's nail bed that could be very painful because that's where the blood vessels are that's where the nerve endings are and it's actually under the nail plate so remember the actual nail plate is that dead tissue that hardened keratin that's grown out from the matrix and so you don't feel it unless you've gone down too far now that pinkish part remember we said a nail is um, translucent pink that pinkish part is just reflecting the blood flow underneath on the nail bed now there's a thin tissue over the nail bed that's kind of like a natural glue that keeps your nail plate sealed down over the nail bed and that's called the bed epithelium so if you've ever seen horror movies where they're like going through metamorphosis and you see the nails like they're just pulling them off and there's like a slime there that's that bed epithelium that you're witnessing that's breaking that seal and the nail plates coming off of their nail bed so actually if we were buffing someone's nail bed that could be quite painful all right uh, we talked about the matrix let's move on to the cuticle now in older textbooks that i used to talk um, i'm sorry teach from it would call it the cuticular system so it was a whole little system and in that system was the eponychium which you can't see well you can see it's that skin there and that's what you would not nip right and then the cuticle is that clear band over the nail plate that's dead tissue that you actually can nip off and then underneath the free edge here there's a live tissue called the hyponychium now what's the function of these the function of the eponychium which used to be called the true cuticle or the true cutis is actually that pigmented skin but it acts as a seal for the finger there so no bacteria can get in and then your hyponychium even though it's located at the whole other end of the finger actually acts as the same it's a seal for that free edge of the nail to be sealed down over the tip of the finger and so that no bacteria can get in so why is it important for us to know because if you're filing too aggressively under there you can actually slice that live tissue and what happens once your skin is sliced open that's right bacteria can get in and you can cause an infection from underneath because it's live tissue so this is why you need to know that the next part is the perionychium so perionychium is 
living skin that's around the root and the sides of the nail. So my assumption would be that it's kind of there in the folds of the nail. So why would that matter? It would matter because if you get in there and you're filing someone's nails, which I hate to say it, I've actually done it before. I've actually cut someone in there when the file was too sharp. But when you're filing in there, if you get too aggressive in those in that area, you can actually hurt the client, right? So with the perionicum, you have um, live skin around there, but that's also connected to the nail folds, which the folds, if you look at the nail there, you could see how the nail naturally kind of fits in the groove there, right? So that skin is like overlapping and the nail just kind of fits right in. And then it connects to the word nail groove. So nail groove and nail folds are really the same thing, but they separate it in the text. And so that's all that area there when you're filing and setting the nail up for artificial enhancements, you wanna be careful with the electric file and with the acrylic file, you have to be gentle. And when I actually do the demo for the acrylic nail, then I will demonstrate how to soften up the edges of your files so you don't slice your client in those areas in the fold and in the nail groove and then let's see specialized ligaments I think is the last one and that's attaching the nail bed and the matrix to the bone so it's underneath and their ligaments and they're attaching it down to the bone and what is that bone called that's right, they're called phalanges. And so when we get to anatomy and physiology, then we'll talk more about that. But you have ligaments in here that's attaching all of that down to the bone there. And those bones underneath, which is your fingers, are called phalanges, but they're also known as digits your fingers are. And so, is there anything else? Nope, nothing else I can think of. I think that's it, guys. So stay tuned for the next video, which is going to be a quiz, actually, a review of everything that we've learned up to now. But I think I did not include nails in this quiz. It's blow dry styling, scalp treatment, draping, shampooing. And I think that's about it. And it's going to be 14 questions. So stay tuned for that. I just want to thank all of you who has subscribed to me thus far. Tell your friends about it. Whoever's learning about cosmetology, whoever's interested in cosmetology as a career, um, suggest my channel. And I hope you guys continue to enjoy my classes as much as I enjoy giving them. And I just want to say God bless you all. And I will see you next time. Bye, guys.